Hurricane Fiona, now a very powerful, possibly catastrophic Category 4 hurricane with 130 mile an hour winds. Watching Invest 98L as it heads into the Caribbean with a 90% chance of tropical formation in the next five days. Welcome back, everyone. It's Weather United here, and I'm hoping you're having a great, awesome Wednesday morning. Before I do get started, and if you're new, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and also sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. Now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on Major Hurricane Fiona, as we are really, really concerned about 98L approaching the Caribbean. That could become our next named storm, potentially, in the next seven days. So here's a look at the latest visible satellite on Fiona, and of course, we have a Category 4 hurricane with winds up to 130 miles an hour, and pressure is down to about 937 millibars from last night, and that's down probably about maybe 7 or 8 millibars. So the system is able to intensify. We are also noticing that the system is definitely becoming more restricted in its outflow to the west, as seen here, and it's more lopsided and more oblong. And so, therefore, any strengthening additional, that is, with Fiona is very scarce to come by for today due to the shear that is likely to increase. So when we look at the latest infrared satellite imagery we could also see very deep uh, intense convection holding strong on the western and northwestern quadrants of the system there might even be a little bit of northwesterly shear very high up in the atmosphere that is keeping this outflow from expanding northward while the lower level cirrus canopy is trying to ex expand a little bit towards the west which indicates that there again is about 15 to 20 knot shear on fiona this morning so now how how strong is Fiona? Well, latest recon mission that was conducted last night did four passes through the center and indicated that air pressure is down to about 937, 938 millibars and did find very strong 130 mile an hour winds throughout the entire system, not even on the eastern side like it typically would be, but also strongest winds on the western periphery of the system. So this is a category four hurricane with a hundred and 30 mile an hour winds and Fiona might intensify just a little bit more today before it begins to slowly weaken or level off and that forecast is still holding at 140 miles an hour in the next 12 to 18 maybe 12 to 24 hours when it will finally plateau its intensity but nevertheless Fiona right now is a very powerful possibly catastrophic category for 130 mile an hour wind hurricane. The National Hurricane Center, again, 130 mile an hour winds also. Movement to the north at 8 miles an hour as of the 8 o'clock advisory this morning on the intermediate. And we can see Bermuda now under a tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch because it's going to be a major hurricane when it passes dangerously close to Bermuda this morning. And then it's going to transition into a, a very, very, very powerful post potential or a post extratropical cyclone with winds again still at major hurricane strength approaching the Nova Scotia in Canada by Saturday morning getting close to Bermuda by Friday morning so this is a very big deal for Canadian standards so now that we talked about Hurricane Fiona that is a very powerful catastrophic category for a hurricane it is a very good idea for the rest of this video that we focus on invest 98L that is still a huge concern for significant development in the next five plus days as soon as it gets into the central and northwestern Caribbean and could be eventually moving into the Gulf of Mexico in that seven to ten day period as a very powerful system potentially we're not going to really get that far into it but I'm telling you right now this definitely has my attention versus say five days ago when it had no probabilities of tropical development at all but first off we want to kind of give a whole overview of what's going on in the Atlantic right now pretty pretty quickly we got major hurricane Fiona we have tropical storm Gaston that is very close to be coming a hurricane also and then of course we have invest 98l that has a 90 percent chance of tropical formation in the next five days and we have two other areas out here to watch too in the 
Atlantic. So as expected, the Atlantic is extremely busy for mid-September. Here's a satellite imagery on Invest 98L now approaching Trinidad and Tobago this morning into the early afternoon hours and also for the southern windward islands near Venezuela with Convection that is somewhat disorganized. We have also some arcing bands, which does indicate we do have a little bit of dry air surrounding the system, but that should mix out pretty nicely in the next couple of days. A closer zoomed in view on this system does indicate that if we look very closely, we do have what appears to be south, more southerly winds over here wrapping around and doing something like this. And so we do have a wave that is orientated like that. And this is likely to help uh, maximize vorticity on the northern lobe of this wave axis as it all moves off towards the west-northwest as it has been doing so for the last couple of days at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. But there is some wrinkles in the forecast and that again is this northerly shear that the system is fighting right now that will continue to be with this system for the next three to five days as it gets curled back underneath this return flow from the outflow pattern from Fiona that is quite strong at this time. So now taking a look at the latest GFS model run for September 21st at 06Z that was initialized and this is running behind schedule actually as you all can see due to NCEP model database issues and computer rendering outages that occurred earlier today. So that's why the GFS model is still rendering very late as of me making this video at 6.30 in the morning Pacific Daylight Time. So how strong or what is the evolution as far as 98L goes that we will be talking about for the entire rest of this video. We're not going to be focusing on Fiona since right now um, that is in the middle of the Atlantic and not bothering anyone. So going forward here in four hours by September the 23rd at 06Z Friday, we can see there is 98L that is trying to get better organized, but the deep convection to the south does indicate that there is going to be northerly shear on the system. By day three, still that shear, as we all can see by that red colors, indicates very intense heavy rainfall, strong winds, not much going on on the northern side. So it would be very interesting to see what, what this actually looks like in three days. It is not after that until we get into day four when the shear will slowly begin to abate the system and we have actually more um, kind of up shear convection that might try to develop with pressures down to 995 millibars. By day five, it strengthens fairly quickly here and we have possibly a hurricane with air pressures down to 973 millibars. Now we can see, if we look at the previous model runs, uh, there has definitely been the change in the last few runs, um, as we can show you here. Um, the system is a little faster, but it's also a little bit more intense. And we can see that here on the last few model runs. If you just go even back to 06Z yesterday, we were continuing with a 962 millibar system, possibly getting very close to, say, Jamaica, maybe close to the Cayman Islands. That has changed today, and we can see that the, uh, the model trends have been further west in the last four runs compared to yesterday. And so it is very important because now if this misses Cuba, of course, that's a good thing. We don't want it to hit any land areas. We also do not want it to hit Belize or anything. Uh, the Yucatan, we don't want it to impact those areas. So that leads to more concerns because now without land interaction, the system will not weaken or get destroyed because of friction or due to other uh, issues on land, right? And so that means this is likely to strengthen much further. I'm only going out to six days because there's a lot of room of error with the computer model guidance today, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. So as we go to 06Z Tuesday next week, we have a 940 millibar hurricane uh, potentially. Again, I don't I don't feel comfortable me saying hurricane in the first place, to be quite honest. Um, but it is very, very likely that we're going to have something very strong in this area of the Caribbean. 
Because again, if we look back at our previous model runs, we can see how there has been pretty big consistency. This is now the ninth model run at showing a powerful hurricane in this portion of the Caribbean. And it is no doubt that we could be dealing with something. So if we go back here, sorry for the image loadings here. Um, internet's not running too well today. And so we can see that when we go back to several runs, this has been quite the consistency among the guidance over the last five plus, six plus runs. And to be specific, over the last nine runs, that's two full days of model data of consistency that we have. So this could be a very big force in the Northwestern Caribbean if this is able to go as planned, like the GFS ends up showing. And if this avoids Cuba or say the Yucatan Peninsula, this could even be stronger than what we could be dealing with so far this season as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. That could be um, winds definitely greater than 74 miles an hour. I'm not going to get into specific details yet because we're not at that point yet in the Gulf. I don't want to get ahead of myself, right? Because if we do, then I'm scaring people. We're causing fear mongering and that's not what we're here for. So looking at the 200 millibar upper level tropospheric flow. So why is 98L going to struggle? Why is it not going to just go kaboom right away? Well, of course, we got Fiona over here doing its return outflow from the northeasterly. So the thing is, 98L is buried underneath this northerly shear that it is continuing with, as we saw on the visible satellite imagery. So when we go forward, we can see there is the system well marketed by the divergent flow aloft, but you can see this northeasterly wind hitting it in the face on the northeastern side. And so a lot of the deep convection will be offset as this path passes to the, the southern portion of the Caribbean into Venezuela and perhaps Aruba. And a lot of people are probably going to say uh, at this point in time that, man, this is not looking organized at all. I don't think it's going to recover. Well, we have some bad news on the GFS model. If we go forward into day five, as soon as this easterly flow weakens and moves away from the system, or as soon as the system moves out of this easterly wind belt, it is going to find itself in some very favorable conditions. We have outflow in all quadrants, very symmetrical, spreading in all areas of the system, and that is indicating that shear will be less than five knots perhaps even getting to zero knots which is no shear essentially at all in five days and so when we go to about day six we have a very very powerful hurricane rapidly intensifying with outflow literally in all quadrants here there is no restriction at all as soon as it gets underneath this bubble of um, high pressure this anti-cyclonic flow over the cyclone, and that is a very optimal conducive positioning that will, would otherwise allow 98L to rapidly intensify and strengthen in a hurry as it gets closer to Cuba in about seven or eight days. But again, we're not going beyond six days in this video. The Getty plot does show us endless possibilities in the next five days. The COTI model has a landfall near Honduras uh, in that area, near Costa Rica-ish, versus, say, the TABS model indicates that it could borderline the Haitian Peninsula, maybe Jamaica, as well as the Cayman Islands in five days. So there are a lot of big models spread here, because first of all, we got to know when it's going to form and where it's going to form, so we could actually make a better forecast on this. So right now, as it stands, the clustering is very diverged beyond day two and day three, and there is no exact forecast yet for any one that is underneath this area of clustering. This could go further north, it could go further south, it could be a little faster, it could be a little slower. There's a lot of variability in the model guidance as far as who is going to exactly get hit. And there is no exact pinpoint answer if Jamaica is going to get hit, if um, the Cayman Islands are going to get hit, if the Haitian Peninsula in um, Hispaniola is going to get hit. We just don't know the answer just yet of this. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now, how strong or what is the health of this system going forward? How strong could it get? Well, the answer is 
By day five, some of the models or most of the model guidance does indicate that it could be a hurricane in five days. While there is also the other couple of models that only indicate that this is going to barely be a tropical storm in a five-day period. So a little bit of a ceiling on this, but not exceptionally. In fact, one model actually indicates that this could be a Category 2 in a little over five days out. So there is a little bit of a ceiling on this. And again, we just don't know exactly all we know right now is this could become a tropical storm, but therefore, as of right now, due to some of the uncertainties with the European, the GFS, and some of the ensembles and stuff, my intensity forecast is on the low end, and I'm only forecasting this to probably become in a 40 to 45 mile an hour tropical storm in about four to five days. It could even be longer than that, so I'm not really pushing this up yet because of the shear and some of the dry air that it's going to be lurking within in the next three to four days. But we'll have a better answer when we get to day three and day four in this forecast exactly if 98L could become our next serious major monster in the Northwestern Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico in days to come. If you found this weather information very helpful, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future updates. But anyways, I will see you in the next one. Peace.